Hello and welcome to the fifth video in the WordPress plugin development. In this video, we're going to be looking at the difference between the private, protected and public attributes that we will need to declare when creating our object. So this follows on from the previous lesson when we started learning how to create objects. Okay, before we start looking at the concepts of public, private, and protected attributes, let's re review what object-oriented programming looks like. So this is some code that we created in the last video. What I would like you to do is stop the video and see if you can, you can quickly answer these questions. If you are finding some of the questions hard, try and go back and review the previous videos and that will help you. So hopefully you've stopped the video and you've answered the questions. So let's go through them together. So what is the object? Well, the key word to create the object is class and the object name is character. And if everything that's in between these two brackets here, this is the object. Here we have the attributes and here we have the methods of the objects. So this will help us answer the other questions. So what are the attributes for this object? Well, we have um, four attributes. We have name, health, is dead, and weapon. So these are the, ob uh, the attributes that make up our character object. What are the object's methods? So remember, the methods are um, what behavior the object can do. So if we look here, we know that the object can display names, it can rename a character, it can display health, and it can do the damage. This, um, this method that, uh, that's up here, the construct method, this is an automatic method that is called when you first create an object. So if you don't know what that is, go back to the previous video um, and have a look. But what will happen is when you create an object, this will be automatically executed. And in here, what we do is we are just assigning the values that we have entered into here into our attributes. So for example, the first name attribute, James, would go into name. The 100 health attribute would go into the health. The bow and arrow would go into the weapon attribute there. So what is the difference between a public function, the one that we've done here, and a normal function like this? Well, there is no difference. Um, a function or the method keyword here, um, that is function, this means it's a public function. If you write public in front of it, you are just giving you more information about the access rights. So there is no difference in object-oriented programming between writing public function and just writing function. So before we move on, what we can do with this code is we can change the access rights that these attributes have. So here we've got them all protected, but we can choose whether we want it these access rights to be have the access rights of a protected attribute, have the access rights as a public attribute, or have the access rights of a private attribute. And now we're going to explain what those differences are. So to describe what um, public, protected, and private access rights are in um, object-oriented um, programming in PHP, I'm going to be using an analogy. So I want us to stop thinking of an object um, as this abstract idea and start thinking of it as a museum. So here we have three different types of museums. The first museum is a public museum. And the attributes um, are going to be the artwork and the methods, which are more um, about the behavior of the object. These are the tours. So in this first museum, we have pictures of these children and they are going to be able to just um, go anywhere they want into the museum. They're going to be able to touch the artwork. They're going to be able to alter the artwork. However, also in that museum, there are tours. So there is an adult there and they, they, they can take the children round and then they can work together to a more structured way of seeing the artwork. So if we look at the first museum, 
It's open. If we imagine this museum, it's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The children are allowed to touch and alter the um, artwork with no supervision. Um, and if another museum wishes to use any of the artwork in the um, in the in the museum, they're allowed to copy that and then display that artwork um, in their museum. So that is very similar to a public um, a public access rights. And you can start seeing the danger um, if you're trying to have sensitive data in your object. So these, let's say these children who are touching the artwork, they could accidentally damage it or do something unintentionally, which can make your code um, stop working. So let's look at the second museum. So the second museum, we're going to use the protected, protected stasis. And so if we imagine, again, the attributes as artwork and tours as methods. So the difference between this and the public museum is um, people can only see the um, artwork if they go on a tour. So they cannot see the artwork or alter the artwork um, if the museum does not have a tour. So if there is some famous artwork that someone really wants to see, however, the museum has it locked up in the storage um, in the storage space, um, then the the person who wants to see it will be unable to do it, and there's nothing they could do to see or alter that artwork. Again, if another museum wishes to take um, a tour or take an attribute from that museum, this museum will allow that museum to take it so it can give its attributes to other museums. Also, if you imagine that this museum has security guards, so if you do try and access um, artwork that you're not allowed to see, um, the security guards will stop you. So again, using that analogy, it shows us that if you want to see an attribute or access an attribute from your object in this, you must create a method. And if you don't create this method, you will not be able to access that attribute. Another important thing is that this, um, this, this access right allows us to do inheritance so we can give our attributes or pass our attributes or extend our attributes to other objects. And the final access right is the private access right. So if we think of this as maybe a private home, again, we still think of um, artwork as attributes. And because homes do not have tours, we can think of parties. So you can only see the artwork if you're invited to the party. Otherwise, you're blocked from seeing or altering that artwork. So if we think of it like this, only, uh, only allow their friends to see that artwork um, at parties. Otherwise, no one can see that artwork. This private one, unlike the protected one, um, will not allow other museums or other houses to see or, or take their artwork. So it's only stored in their house. It will not be extended to um, another museum. And again, there's security guards stopping people from seeing it. So if we go back to our object, the difference between this one, the private and protected, is the fact that private, um, a private access right means that you won't be able to extend any of the attributes to further objects. They are only for the object that you have written it for. And again, um, the security guard means that if you do try to access it directly, or you do try to give it to um, another object, there will be an error message and it will not work. 
So hopefully you've got a better idea of what public protected and private access rights are in PHP. Um, we are now going to look at some code and I'm going to ask you some questions. Um, so hopefully you can consolidate some of the information. So this is our code and we have some questions that I would like you to try and answer about this code. So stop the video, try and answer them, and then we'll try and go through them together. So hopefully you've answered the questions. Let's try and go through them together. So how many objects are there? Well, there, there is two objects. The first object is called dad. Um, the second object is called son. If we look here, this extends. This means that there is some inheritance going on. So what will happen is some of these attributes, based on the, the access rights, some of these attributes will be passed down into the Sun class. So how many attributes does each object have? Well, if we look at the dad object, the dad object has the first name, surname, and the salary. So that's three attributes. The son, the son has um, the first name and the uh, son's name and the age, but also it also has a few attributes from the dad class. So because first name is public and so is allowed to be extended, the son also has the attribute first name. Because the um, surname is protected, and the protected also allows you to extend the attribute to other classes, the son has surname. The salary is private, so this means that no other object can access this. So the son class, or the son object, has one, two, three, four attributes. So what is the output for the test? So if we've got here, these are, is the test codes. We've created two uh, objects. The first object is called Bob. The second object is called Bob-san. So if we echo the first one um, and we look at Bob first name, well, because Bob first name is public, this will echo Bob. So remember, Bob um, or the public attributes can be accessed directly. So remember, people can directly go up and touch the artwork without any, any other um, Tor member structuring them. So they can directly access that. So the first one will just be Bob. If we look at the second test, echo Bob surname, if we look here, that's protected. And because it's protected, it means that you cannot see the artwork unless you're in the tour. So you cannot access the attribute unless you call the method first. Now, surname is not a method. It is a attribute. So this will produce an error message. This will not work. Again, echo Bob's salary. Salary is private, and so you cannot access it directly. So this one will produce a error message. This echo Bob get surname, well, because it has brackets, it is a method. So if we look at the method, it returns the surname. And remember, the surname is protected, but we can access it through our method. So remember, just like our analogy, for protected museums, we can access the artwork through our tours. So this one should echo Andrews because Andrews is the surname. If we look at the next test, um, Bob gets salary. Again, that is a method. We look at this method and it allows us to return a private one. So remember the private, um, the private analogy is a house and the methods are a party. Can we see um, artwork when we go to their parties? Yes, we can. So can we access this private attribute if we go through this method? Yes, we can. So this get salary will produce this 25,000. So that will be echoed. OK, let's look at the second one. So we're looking at the second object now, which is the sun object. Now we look at get name. So if we look at get name, we have this 
uh, method here. This will echo the son's name, and then this will echo the surname. So remember, the surname is up here. And remember, protected attributes can be given to other museums. Protected attributes can be extended to other uh, objects. So for this one, this get name, it will be returning the son's name here and the parent's attribute. So it should echo Bill Andrews. And the last one, the Bob's son uh, get salary. If we look at here, oh, even though it's spelt wrong, I've, uh, I have did not, this will produce an error because the method is not spelt the correct way, but even if it was spelt the correct way, we will not be able to access this information because if we look up and we look at salary, this is private. So just like the private house will not allow its artwork to be shown in other museums, private means that it will not allow other objects to access this. So even if it was spelt correctly, um, this would still produce an error saying it cannot find this attribute. Now the last question, do you think the methods are public, protected or private? So remember previously we had the public function constructor up here. Well, all methods are public methods because we want to have direct uh, access to them. So if, they're, if they were not public methods, it would be much more difficult to call them. And so it would be much more difficult to access our information. So you can add public in front of it, but if you don't, it's still a public method. Okay, so before we go, I would like you to try and quickly answer some of these concept checking questions. If you are able to answer all of them, I think you have fully understand the difference between public protected and private access rights. So stop the video now, and then we'll quickly go through the answers. So the first question, um, which access right does not allow you to pass an attribute to a child object? The answer is private. So remember the private one does not allow you to um, extend the any attributes to any of the child objects. If you don't know if you need to pass the attribute to another object, which one should you pick? Well, the idea is that you want to limit the information as much as possible. So if you don't know um, if you need to allow other um, allow people to access it or other objects to access it, it's best to keep it private. We want to limit the amount of access the code and maybe users have to these attributes. So what is the difference between a protected and a public attribute? So the protected one means that you have to use a method to access the attributes. So if you do not call the method and you try and call it directly, there will be an error message and you won't be able to get any information back. Whereas a public attribute, you can directly access it. You do not need to use a method to get that information. And what is the advantage of being able to pick this, these access rights? Well, this is all about encapsulation. It allows you to hide or protect the internal representation of your object. So if you don't need um, an attribute to um, be used by other objects, you can limit its access a lot more and hide um, what it does a lot more within your object. So that's all we have for today. So thank you very much. Hopefully um, we are now able to explain the difference between private protected and public attributes. And again, if you have any feedback for these videos, um, for, for example, do you think we accomplished our objective? And is there any way I can improve these videos? If you have any feedback, just leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much and goodbye.